In 1965, Dow AgroSciences bought a pesticide called Chlorpyrifos. It brought it to the market. The pesticide became widely used on crops all over the world due to how effective it was at killing mosquitoes, ants, roaches, and other insects that pose a threat to the global food supply. 52 years after it was first introduced, the pesticide is used in more than 100 countries around the globe on more than 50 different kinds of commercial crops. If you live in the United States and you've eaten apples, lettuce, peaches, oranges, bananas, or potatoes in the last 50 years, chances are you've been eating food that's been sprayed with this chemical. The EPA estim estimated that between 1987 and 1998, about 21 million pounds of this pesticide were used annually in the U.S. By 2007, chlorpyrifos was the most commonly used organophosphate pesticide in the United States, with an estimated 8 to 11 million pounds. 8 to 11 million pounds applied to our food in non-residential turf like golf courses. Like most pesticides, it's a neurotoxin that disrupts the normal function of the nervous system in insects, leading to death. But as years of scientific research is now telling us, this dangerous pesticide can also act as a neurotoxin in human beings. Even though Dow Chemical claims, of course, that their pesticide is completely harmless to human beings at normal doses, we've heard that before, science tells us that exposure can cause very serious and very permanent damage to the nervous system of people who are exposed. Experimental animal studies suggest that infants and children are more susceptible than adults to the effects of low exposure because they've a de they have a decreased capacity to, to detoxify and to metabolize this chemical. This results in disruption in the nervous system and developmental process. Exposure by pregnant women or infants can lead to impaired brain development, resulting in a lifetime of hardships. These are developmental injuries that can't be overcome or corrected. Once brain development is impaired, the damage is permanent. Among adults, applicators of pesticide on farms were noted to have a far higher incidence of lung cancer than the general population, as well as among the population of farmers that use other forms of pest control. They're also far more likely to develop a condition called wheeze, which occurs when the airways become restricted after repeated long-term exposure to even allegedly safe levels of this pesticide. There really might not be safe levels. Joining me to explain this story a little bit is Farron Cousins, executive editor of the Trial Lawyer magazine. Farron, let's start with the pesticide itself. What does the science tell us about this, about this chemical? The science is telling us that this chemical is far more toxic and dangerous than anything that Dow Chemical has ever told us. And scientists have been studying this uh, particular chlorpyrifos for decades now, and it's telling us that just like it works on insects as a neurotoxin, it is doing the same thing to human beings. We know that uh, pregnant women exposed to this pesticide are more likely to give birth to children with neurological uh, impairments, low birth weight, uh, uh, brain mal uh, malformations. These children grow up with lower IQs, lower attention spans, uh, a lower working memory than normal uh, children who were not exposed to this. And that is just the tip of the iceberg in what we're seeing in children. We're also, as you pointed out, uh, the, the farmers who uh, use this pesticide are exposed to it every day are developing very serious respiratory diseases. They have a 50% more likelihood chance of developing lung cancer than the general population, even though on average, they uh, have a 50% lower tobacco use rate than the general population, so you can rule out oh, outside factors sorry, me, like let, tobacco use with their lung cancers. Isn't this the same story that we hear again and again and again from the chemical industry? It always starts out that they, they're trying to get a chemical like this pushed through the, through the EPA. They're calling on all their political uh, ammunition, all of their financial ammunition, all of their media, which loves, seems to adore the chemical industry because they advertise so much on places like MSNBC. You won't see this story, by the way, on, uh, on like MSNBC because they can't tell the story. Their advertisers don't allow them to do it. But we see the same thing play out. 
And then we find out, oh, all of a sudden we start taking a look at the clinical data and the clinical data is deplorable. And then we go back and we ask the regulators, why didn't you do something about it? We ask the media, why didn't you report about it? And that's thousands of people dead by then, dead and injured by then. Isn't this just the same story we see time and time again from DuPont, Dow Chemical, name the chemical, Monsanto, name the chemical, and we've seen this played out again and again because A, the media has no more guts to tell these stories. B, we don't have a regulatory system that even works mildly anymore. And C, you don't have a government at all that's going to do anything more than slap these people on the, on the wrist when they get caught. Nobody goes to jail. They kill thousands of people. Nobody goes to jail. What's your take? How is this any different at all than all the cases that we have to report on this show? Well, what's remarkable about it is that it's not remarkable in that regard. You could replace the word chlorpyrifos with C8, uh, with Spelter West Virginia, with Roundup. You can replace the word Dow with Merck, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, any other major company, Monsanto and, and, and DuPont, as you pointed out. It's the exact same, it's like they're all reading out of the same playbook. You know, we, we, we make this horrible toxin, our internal studies show that it's terrible and kills people. Uh, and by the way, chlorpyrifos is killing 10,000 people around the globe annually. But anyway, we make this toxin, it's killing people, we know it. We present this to the regulatory agencies. We tell them, look, these studies can't really be trusted. Trust us though. It's a safe chemical, regulatory agency signs off on it. The lawsuits begin, the documents are uncovered. It's the same story every time the corporate media then has to play catch up. So, like suddenly, oh, well, we didn't know this was happening. We didn't know it was going on. Yes, you did. Uh, independent outlets have been reporting on it for years. Even in the case of chlorpyrifos, the EPA itself has come out with negative studies on it. Corporate media ignored it just like they always Okay, let did. me ask you this. How, how, yeah, corporate media, this is part of the story. Don't you see? This is part of the story. Last week, we heard MSNBC talking about, oh my gosh, RT has to register as a foreign agent now. They must be doing something wrong. Well, no. Every company that does business in the United States from another country has to register. So, so all of a sudden, why do they attack a, an organization like RT or Al Jazeera or these independent organizations? Why do they attack us? Because we tell these stories that they are ordered from 50th floor. Don't, don't tell that story because you're going to dry up advertising dollars. But by God, here you've got a product that's killing people, that is injuring the brains of small children. And you go to MSNBC, see if you can find them reporting one time about this, where they actually do a story that means something. Okay, so what do we, what do we know about this chemical that is absolutely undisputed? What do we know about the dangers of this chemical? Well, here's what we know. We already talked about the health effects, but let me read to you what the EPA itself uh, announced that they put out last November, November 2016. Here it is. All food exposures exceeded safe levels. Children ages one to two exposed to levels of chlorpyrifos that are 140 times more than the EPA has deemed safe. Uh, there's no safe level of chlorpyrifos for drinking water, meaning if any of it gets in the water, it is contaminated and unusable, but we still drink it anyway. Uh, pesticide drift can reach unsafe levels at 300 feet from the edge of a farm where it's sprayed. Residual pesticide uh, residue is dangerous even 18 days after uh, uh, application to crops. There's no safe level for this. I mean, hell, the EPA banned it for use in homes uh, 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 early in the years 2000, 2001, said, no, this is so dangerous. We can't have normal people going to the hardware store, buying it and putting it on their lawns because it could kill them. Yeah. And yet in March of this year, Scott Pruitt, the new head of the EPA said, you know what? I'm going to ignore the science. I'm going to side with my buddies over in industry and we're going to end the debate on core pyrofos yeah. once and for all. So have at and, it and, farmers, and we, dump it as we, much as you want. We see it on every story. We see it on every story, whether it's Roundup. We got Monsanto that's killing people with Roundup, causing, <laughs> causing blood diseases that are killing people. I defy you. If you're watching this program, go and find one time where a station like MSNBC has reported anything about Clopyrifos, where they tell the truth about what the story is behind the story. You won't find it. 
And the reason you won't find it, because they get huge advertising dollars from people like Monsanto and Dow and DuPont. And you will never get these stories until somebody in your family is sick or dying from something like this product. That's when you're going to get the story. But they'll attack independent media like, you know, like RT or like Al Jazeera or, or the independent uh, uh, TV stations because we can tell the story because we don't have advertisers telling us, no, you know, you better not tell that story. Well, we don't care. We tell the story if it's true. And, and, and that's, that's part of the problem here, Farron. The part of the problem where we don't have any help from corporate media getting these stories out. So at this point, it's done deal, isn't it? I mean, this is, you know, you've got Pruitt, who's owned and operated by Trump, owned and operated by the industry. This is going to happen, isn't it? Unfortunately, yes. And, and just like all of the other instances, eventually what's going to bring this to light, what's going to bring it to the corporate media attention is when the lawsuits begin to be filed, because we know that Dow knows about the dangers. We know they're underplaying the dangers and we know that this thing is causing significant problems in children and in farmers, 10,000 deaths a year across the globe in more than a hundred countries combined. Yeah, this thing is going to eventually make it to the news, but only because Dow's going to find themselves in hot water yeah. and nobody's going to be able to ignore it at that point.